Population disaster? Time will tell, I suppose. But the most recent intergenerational report shows that the number of older Australians are set to soar as younger Australians are having less and less children, resulting in a decreasing number of workers to sustain an ever-aging population. Here is the 2023 intergenerational report released on 24th of August, noting that this is the sixth report to be released since its inception in 2002. The report identifies five major risk factors, two of which we'll be covering in this video, population ageing and rising demand for care and support services, which I think are essentially the same category. The other topics the report covers, which we won't be looking at in this presentation, are technological and digital transformation, climate change and geopolitical risk. I'll be downloading the main PDF file as well as the chart data, which is pretty handy. This is the report itself, Australia's Future to 2063. It's almost 300 pages long, so obviously I'll only be going over the more interesting stuff. The Treasurer promises prosperity, opportunity and a stronger, more sustainable and more inclusive nation. Lies. Well, at least, unprovable speculation. I'll start with this chart showing the underlying cash balance. Although we are currently in surplus, shown in red here, from next year onwards, don't expect us to ever be in surplus again. Although budget deficits will narrow initially, from the mid-2030s onwards, the deficit will continue to grow and grow as the population ages. This will be the new normal, according to this report. As expected, the main spending pressures will be health, aged care, NDIS, Australia's disability scheme, interest payments and defence. Unsurprisingly, Australia has shifted towards a services-based economy, as we no longer make anything anymore. Around 90% of jobs are now in services. With offshore labour becoming very cheap, it's no longer financially viable to create stuff here. This trend is not going to change any time soon. Also unsurprisingly, the percentage of the economy dedicated to care, that is hospitals, aged care and so on, is set to rapidly increase as Australia's ageing population woes take hold. Not to mention that Australians are having less babies than are required to maintain the population, a fertility rate of less than 2.1 children per woman, the replacement level fertility rate, results in a population decline, which is obviously offset by immigration here in Australia. Australia has been below this rate for decades. Women are simply having less children. It's funny, they're predicting that the fertility rate will continue to decline over the next decade to about 1.62, and then stabilise and stay that way over the next few decades. I think that's very much an assumption. If other countries are anything to go by, for example China's has dropped to a record low of 1.09, while South Korea has the lowest fertility rate in the world at 0.78, less than one child per mother, I'd suggest that the birth rate in Australia will continue to decline as well. If I'm still making these videos in 40 years time, I'll let you know how my prediction works out. But why are people having less children? Director of Strategy and Analytics at research and polling firm Redbridge, Cos Samaris, when asked about Australia's population concerns, replied, The problem we've got is people aren't having enough kids anymore. The long-term prognosis is that Australia has an ever-decreasing number of younger workers having to sustain an older population. The amount of people who are at working age that would be available for governments to tax is going to shrink unless people start having children in greater numbers, and that's not happening or migration is exponentially increased. Of course, we know the social impacts that would have in terms of housing. Currently, we have a housing crisis, and that is causing problems with birth rates. We are hearing from a lot of people delaying children because of the housing situation. Significant mortgage repayments, rental payments. Unless governments find a way to lessen the burden on millennials and Gen Z, then our economy will get cooked. They are justifiably having less kids. You don't have to look very far to find that housing is a big issue. Rental vacancy rates falling nationally and tipped to remain at extremely low levels. Mr Samaris continues, A boomer needed four years of their annual wage to take on a mortgage and repay it. Gen Z, over 15 years. Gen Z and millennials are currently burning their savings to stay afloat and will not be able to retire while debt ridden. Should we then also ask them to support us in retirement? I say no, and I am sure many under 40-year-olds would agree with me. There are only two levers that can broaden the tax base, immigration or increasing the birth rate. 
Successive governments will have to address the problem. I think these voters will force them to. These generations are most likely to vote for a third party. They will disturb the political landscape. Governments have no choice but to address it. This is the actual population growth between 1982 and 2001. The original intergenerational report from 2002 predicted Australia's population reaching 25.7 million by 2050. This forecast was based on a net overseas migration, NOM, of 90,000 people per year. But what do you think really happened? Australia's population skyrocketed. Australia hit the 25.7 million population projection from the 2002 IGR 29 years early in 2021 after growing by an unprecedented 6.4 million people over that 20-year period. The reason for this complete failure of a prediction was because in 2002, the business lobby complained of serious skill shortages and warned that unless the nation imported a lot of workers, the economy would end up going backwards. So the government at the time increased the permanent migrant intake to 150,000 with subsequent Labor and coalition governments lifting the permanent migrant intake further to its current planning level of 190,000 per year, more than double the 90,000 people used in the original forecasts. This is the Department of Home Affairs Migration Program Planning Levels website. They state, on 9th of May 2023, the Australian government announced that the planning level for the 2023-24 permanent migration program will be set at 190,000 places. This was designed to address persistent and emerging skills shortages. The most funny thing I find is that they state, the permanent migration program will help support our economy as it transitions to net zero emissions. So in order to use less energy, in order to cut greenhouse gas emissions, we need to import millions of new people? Hilarious. So what do you think the current intergenerational report predicts in terms of population? I'll give you a clue. It goes right off the page. Zooming out, we can see that Australia's population, based on current forecasts, is set to reach 40.5 million people by 2062. This is because the current government expects the net overseas migration to steady out to 235,000 per year. That's if future governments don't decide to increase it further. This means that if these forecasts are accurate, with a net overseas migration of 235,000 per year, Australia will increase its population by an extra 14.2 million residents over the next 40 years, which is equivalent to adding a combined Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide to Australia's current population of 26.3 million. If you think the housing crisis is bad now, just wait 40 years. With 40 million people, I'd love to know how the government are going to remedy this. If we can't build enough houses now, how the hell are we going to do it with an extra four capital cities worth of population? Not to mention that despite the massive increase in imported population, the report accepts that the population of people aged 65 and over will more than double by 2063. The cost of supporting the health of all of these people is almost going to quadruple based on current estimates noting that this is in real dollars, 2023 prices. Obviously, an ageing population can't build as many houses as a younger population. It comes as no surprise that aged care spending is going to increase from about 1% of GDP to almost 2.5%. You know what term comes to mind when I think of this looming population catastrophe? Ponzi scheme. A population Ponzi scheme. Yeah, we'll just keep increasing the population perpetually. Everything will be A-OK. -okay until it isn't. Unfortunately, one man's population dream can very easily turn into a population disaster. Mm -hmm.